are here we are we are also live on facebook hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of wtf live num episode number 34. 34 we are so excited to be here and we um this episode is going to be jam-packed with a lot of information so if you want to grab a little piece of paper and a pen to take some notes if you're new to this topic or just want to learn a little bit more um let them know what the topic is, Vita. And what are we talking about? We are talking about ripple fold draperies. Yeah. What the heck is ripple fold? And, you know, what do you eat it with for breakfast? <laughs> That's what we'll be talking about in just a second. And like Kim said, we're going to be showing you not just the visuals, but a lot of, um, uh, well, not a lot, but some technical information, some mm -hmm. things that you really need to know in order to specify ripple fold draperies. So yes. here we go. Without further ado, here we go. All right, okay. let's show a little bit of visual candy first. So this project right here was a project that we did um, down in central Jersey. And they are fully operable baton draw uh, ripple fold drapes. They are installed on a decorative ripple fold um, traverse rod. Um, and these were shears that were unlined, and I believe the fullness was about 100% fullness. So and we'll talk about that in a second later. so you know what that means. Yeah. So um, so this is just showing you we installed it at um, this height here. There's another, there's a larger window um, in the other okay, section that. of the room. So we wanted to keep um, in terms of height because of the way that that window was set and the crown was set. We stayed consistent with the height all around. As you can see in the other room, there the dining room, um, the, the rods all line up throughout. So that's something that I really like to do is that even though they're technically two different spaces, mm -hmm. but I always like to make sure that visually the line um, of the rod lines up from one room to the nut from the to the next. To the next. So yeah, hello. Um, so that this way there isn't a lot of this happening here. Yeah. Yes, yeah, definitely. And, and with the ripple fold, there are two ways in which we can install these uh, drapes. So, hey, Regina, out on Facebook. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you want two ways in which we can install these? So, so it's it's either on a decorative um, rod, a traverse rod, or a non-decorative traverse rod. So. And here you're showing the decorative traverse the decorative, rod. Decorative, correct. Nice. All right. Now, let me show you what it is that we're actually talking about in terms of the back end of the drapery. So Kim just showed you the front end, the beautiful part, the beautiful rod and really pretty drapery that uh, seemingly doesn't have pleats, but is very kind of clean and streamlined looking. And this is what's happening on the back end. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the picture that you're seeing up in the um, on the left at the top, that is a ripple fold track. And this track is really at the basis of, and here Kim is showing it, the actual 3D sample of it as well. Mm -hmm. And so this track is really at the basis of any decorative rod that you would be seeing out there. Essentially, it's this track or some kind of variation of this track that has to be inside the, the, the pretty or the fascia of, of the decorative track. Um, and, and then you see the carriers inside the track and you see that they kind of come down in the little loop or the eyelet. What happens, mm -hmm, yep, thank you, thank you, thank you. So so that's one part of that, that's the hardware part of the mm -hmm. ripple fold drapery installation. The soft part of the ripple fold drapery is what's called a snap tape. And that's what you're seeing in the second picture. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it is, let me show you a little bit a different version. Essentially, it's just um, a tape that is applied to the back of the window treatment of the drapery panel, as you're seeing in the top picture, and Kim's going to show it to you in a second. It's applied to the header of the drapery. So instead of pleating the drape like we would usually do on pleated drapes, we have the drapery flat, lay down flat on the table, and we apply this tape just flat directly onto the back end of the drapery panel, just the way Kim is showing, just the way the picture is showing on the top left. And then the other two pictures you're just seeing, the middle one just shows the whole tape just kind of um, uh, swirled around and, uh, you know, tucked <laughs> in, or essentially the way it comes from the vendor is on the spool that you're seeing on the right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it usually comes in like, I think, a 50-yard increment or a 100-yard yard mm -hmm. increment 
increment. Oh, and another reason I wanted to show those two pictures of the snap tape is because it either comes in the sheer version, which is the bottom, the far right picture, or like a regular version, which is the middle picture. Okay. Um, and you now, could also get this in black. Ah, what you know? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, we we had to order it for we had to order it in black for a black drape that we did. So um, it was like a sheer, and you could see it from both sides. So it does come in black. Very so. nice. So let me just go back to the previous picture real quick. What happens is the snap tape apply to the drapery panel, then gets attached onto that track or the decorative rod that has the track inside it and with the snap. So the snap on the snap tape goes inside the carrier on the track. And when the carriers are squished together is when the snap tape you see is also kind of squished together and it creates this really pretty s curve um i think in europe they call it like s curve rates or something like that that or the wave or the wave which is yeah. a, a, a more sort of intuitive name to it all together so so that's essentially what it looks like on the front end the first picture and this is the back end and this is the actual and tape, and it actual is, like tape. I said, apply it flat onto the back of the drapery. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's look at some more pretty. Let's look at some more pretty. <laughs> so again, this was a ripple fold drape that we did um, on a decorative rod, and um, with this, we brought it all the way up to underneath the crown. Now, with this installation they wanted two layers of drapes but because of the um the layout of the living room we could not have a layer of the decorative stationary panels and then a layer of the sheer panels behind it because any so two layers layer side by side, so side, one by side. in front of the other yep yeah. so the so Typically, when you're doing it like a double layer type of drape or a double rod system, you have your decorative panel in the front and then your sheer, your operable panel in the back. Now, with that, your bracket projection is usually about anywhere from six to seven inches, depending on the fabric, the hardware, and all that good stuff. And especially with the ripple fold, if you go back to that second slide that, that Vita was showing you with the tape, um, on the rod and you can see how it undulates you need about like four inches of space from front mm -hmm. to back with a ripple fold Definitely. so with minimum this, so we, four and a half yeah, to be to yeah be like minimum so, yeah so like anytime we're doing them like hidden in pockets or and whatnot we always specify that the interior of a ripple fold pocket needs to be a minimum of six inches so that this way you're not rubbing the fabric isn't rubbing within the pocket so with this 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 client did not want to push her sofa in any further into the room because she did have other chairs and it would affect the layout. So what we did was we came up with um, putting the stationary panels and the shears all on the same rod. I know that's not something that, that typically happens, but I feel like it worked out in this instance and it totally really did. just framed out the seating area and the sofa. This is a corded rod system, so you can do them with baton. So the first one we showed you was a baton system. This is a cord system. So it's all um, the drape and the shear are sewed together. Mm -hmm. They're so, sewn together. Yeah. And also another thing that I wanted to make sure that our listeners understand between the baton system and the cord drawn system, the visual look of it doesn't change. So you're no. still looking at the same um, S curve or the wave, mm -hmm. this, like everything up at the top is the same. Everything in the back is the same. The only difference is actually inside the track. And with mm -hmm. the cord system, there is a cord that goes inside it and that's what yes. moves the carriers. And with the baton, there is no cord. You just literally grab onto the baton or a Bond is another name and 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 push it forward and close right so so that's that's the mechanics for the baton the mechanics for the um, cord as far as how the end consumer uses it she mm -hmm. would have to go or he would have to go to the end of each, either end of the rod and do one of these motions and it's a continuous loop cord mm -hmm that um that that you draw like this uh, you know up and down and that makes the draperies go back and forth so that's really the main difference between the baton and the cord is how the client uses it and what they right. prefer do they prefer chuk -chuk? Yeah. <laughs> or do they prefer chuk -chuk? right so and these are also conversations that you have to have with the client because since this drape was behind the sofa 
it was one of those things of, do you want to have to climb onto your sofa every time you open and close the drapes? Or yeah. would you rather just go to one end and pull the drape open and close? So if you are working with a window treatment specialist, these are the kinds of things that we don't expect designers and consumers to 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 know to ask these questions. Exactly. But these are things that you want to just keep in the back of your mind that like, how are we going to operate the drape? How is it going to function? Is there furniture that is going to be in the way? Yeah, exactly. And I really like, Kim, your point of that we don't expect the designers or the consumers to know um, all these questions to ask. And really, I think that kind of hits into the crux of the matter a lot of times with window treatments, whereas sometimes people, designers, consumers, they don't know what they don't know and therefore right. don't know what questions to ask. And right. so it is really up to your window treatment specialist who should be knowledgeable enough and experienced enough. And uh, like Kim and I have made all of those mm -hmm. mistakes in our you know, I don't know, 30 plus years of combined experience yeah. that we know we kind of have a mental checklist of all the things to ask you about and to worry about on our end so that at the end, when this thing is installed, the customer is not like, wait a second, I got to climb on the sofa to operate this thing. Well, that's silly. Why didn't anybody tell me about it when we were exactly. designing it two months ago? <laughs> exactly. Nobody wants to be in that situation. No, no, not at all. Uh, all right, let's go on to the next um, slightly technical thing. Okay, so when you guys specify or think about the hardware for these ripple fold drapes, I want you to think about master carriers. Now, what the heck is a master carrier? <laughs> I, I want you to think of, uh, of a train. So with mm -hmm. the train, you have the, what's, what's the main train called? The, you know, the, the first one, the, the one that pulls everything. No, the caboose is the What's last the one. <laughs> you know, the engine, there it is. It's the, the there engine. There you go. <laughs> and I have to remember back to my uh, Thomas the Train days with my son. Uh, <laughs> that was I 10 years not, ago. I have not been there, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so, so, you, so you have the main engine and then you have cars, right? Well, the cars don't move by themselves. You need to have the engine that pulls those cars. And the reason the second car, the reason the first car is pulled is because the engine is coupled with it, right? And the reason that the second car is moved is because this, the first and the second are coupled together. So the master carrier, and Kim is showing it right there. Do, yeah, yeah, yes. It's, it's, Stay on the master carrier. Yep, thank you. Great job. Okay, so that's your master carrier. That's your engine. That's the main sauce that moves everything behind mm -hmm. it, okay? And the cars are, like, what's coupling them? Well, it's either the cord, if it's a corded system. If it's a baton-drawn system, that it's actually the drape that, that is connecting mm -hmm. them together, you know? Okay, so it's the snap on, on one, uh, on the fabric here and the snap <coughs> on the fabric here that connects those two snaps together and makes them move in the same direction either way. Right, Kim? Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, I feel like we need to have like a music accompaniment to this. <laughs> All right, okay, so back to my original point of the slide. And it is about the master carriers. Mm -hmm. With ripple fold drapes, you have two types of master carriers. You have carriers that are overlap and you have carriers that butt together. The first picture, the very top picture is the overlap carrier, which is kind of what Kim was showing there too with her hands. And also your sample is also a, an yes, overlap a master overlap. carrier as well. So what that means, there's a master that is that is that, that protrudes forward into the room. Yep. And then there's a master on the other side that that inverts back into the room. I suppose that that would be the word. Right, right. Yeah, so that would be the top view and this is the front view. So, I mean, exactly as the word says, they, they overlap, okay? The second type of the master carrier is butt master carrier, just, just as it sounds, B-U-T-T. -T. <laughs> and what it is, they, they, don't, they don't come one in front of the other. They come together and they touch. Kim, I love you being my Vanna White. Any day, Vita, any day for you. <laughs> so so two, th those two master carriers, they come together, they, they kind of mm -hmm. touch, but they do not come one in front of the other. Okay, why am I telling you this? Who cares and why should you care and where does it matter is really the ultimate question. Where it matters is in the situations where you need to have a complete blackout scenario in bedrooms, you 
we tend to go for overlap matching carriers because that ensures that there is no gap between the two sides of the drapery panel. There is no light bleed, essentially what the gap creates. In other situations, and to be honest, my favorite look is more of a butt master because what happens, as you can see in the rendering that I have on the top and the bottom, the overlap carry, the overlap look breaks apart that yeah. beautiful wave that the ripple fold drape creates. When it comes in the middle, it just kind of, it creates a sort of a, a straight piece that doesn't have an, any, any curve to it. And so, again, I think we talked about it before in our episodes, there's never a perfect decision, but there's an optimal decision. Or Kim, you call it, it's the functionality over the, the beauty. I, that I call it, I call it, yeah, for, uh, form over beauty, yeah. The function oh, over oh, beauty. Function over beauty, that's right, that's right. So mm -hmm. um, if the customer doesn't care that there's a little bit of light bleed in, 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 in the morning, then go for butt master. But if the customer really cares about it being complete blackout, then you have to go for overlap. Now, if it's a situation like in the living room or dining room or any other room where you really want to have that uninterrupted look going back and forth and back and forth in beautiful wave, then my recommendation is to go for the butt master. Yes, I agree. Would you agree, Kim? That's what you would yeah, suggest? I mean, and that's, 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 I don't know if you can see behind me. Um, uh, but no, it kind of uh, cuts it. Let's see if I can adjust. So yeah, that, that we have a ripple fold behind me. And because these are more of a stationary panel type of look, we went for the butt master look in this because we didn't want that flat edge. Now that mm -hmm. flat edge helps if like you're say you're doing like a Y tape, then yeah, mm -hmm. you want to be able to show it on a ripple fold. Then yeah, totally go for the, um, the overlap master carrier, not the butt master carrier, but mm -hmm. in a situation where they're, panels that they're not intending to move or to Vita's point, then you want to go for the butt master because it just finishes the look. Um, but for, for room darkening, you definitely want to do overlap and have that conversation of what level of dark. Yep, absolutely. Needs. Perfect. All right. And um, there is another uh, technical aspect that I want to show you guys and explain to you. So in, in regular draperies, there is a concept of fullness. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a really big concept to explain here in our 30-minute show. <laughs> and, um, and, and perhaps we will at some point. <laughs> I actually have a, a presentation um, where I, I go into it in a pretty detailed way that I give to WCAA and some other organizations, but that's that's a separate topic. But the, my, my point is that it's, it's a pretty big topic. The, mm -hmm. what I, the point that I guess I want to make here is that if you don't know what concept of fullness is, you absolutely have to, so please educate yourself. Mm -hmm. For this purposes of the, for the purposes of the ripple fold drapes, I want you to know that ripple folds come in predetermined fullnesses. Mm -hmm. They come in 60%, 80%, 100%, and 120%. To make a parallel to uh, pleated draperies, 100% fullness on ripple fold drape is two times fullness on pleated drapes. Mm -hmm. So two times fullness is usually what our standard is here at Italia Inc. for um, over drape or for like for your regular drapery. Uh, some years ago, uh, like back in the 80s, the standard was two and a half, sometimes three, to make drapes really, really full. Now that we live in 2021 and we live in much more simplistic times, at least as far as the window treatments are concerned, we've, we've brought it down to two times full. So if you want, if you like, if you have done pleated drapes and you like the fullness that you usually get from your workroom, which is about two times, if you do ripple folds, you want to go for 100%. And here in the pictures, I know it's a, see, so know it's a bit hard to see, so if you're like kind of like on the go or driving and can't quite see the picture, please drive carefully. But I do encourage you to go back to either the Facebook replay or Instagram replay and look at this image very, very closely. This is, uh, these three images, Actually, my, my colleague Beata found on the internet, I believe it comes from um, loftinteriors.com. Yes. I should yes. give them credit for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were really great in creating these comparisons. And you need to see um, how full you want your draperies to be. And these four pictures show the difference between 60%, 80%, 100 and 120 and essentially all it means is the amount of fabric that is used for these drapes mm -hmm. and um, 
the kind of like the amount of fullness that that the drape communicates so do you want your drapes to be really luscious and kind of beautifully voluptuous if you will if that description can be used on drapes or do you want them to be much more subdued and much more streamlined and much simpler so depending on and i can make that determination for you i as a window treatment specialist my job is to educate you and to show you the difference I can also tell you what I've personally liked and what has worked in our in our projects. But ultimately, it is up to the designer who is responsible for the total look of the room and the space to decide uh, which look it is, which which design um, schematic mm -hmm. it is that, that you're going after. But no, for a fact that there's four four different kinds. And 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 here is your cheat sheet to know exactly what the difference between the four is. And really what it is, it's the distance between the snaps. That's with the with the fullness. It's how close the snaps are and how much fabric you need. So that also that also um, is a big determining factor. I know that there are some there are certain rod companies that only work in a hundred percent fullness. See, I got burnt on that one time. So don't make that mistake. That one oh, that's interesting, really. That I didn't ask you. Mm -hmm. The um, we specified eighty percent, and because that's what the designer liked, she didn't want something that was like super full. And we went with this rod, and I ordered the rod, and found out that eighty percent does not exist. Ah, for this interesting. Rod. So, so that was a, that, yeah. was a really lovely <laughs> day. There, 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 there are ways that before we fall in love with a rod, we need to figure out what fullness we want to go with and see if that fullness is compatible with that rod system. Yeah. All right, let's go for more pretty. Okay. So this is a picture. This is an example here that you can see of an overlap. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why we went with an overlap here. And you Again, can see the break. I mean, even in the yeah. little picture, I can see on my screen how mm -hmm. it goes in and out, in and out, in and out straight. So it really yep. breaks up the flow of the wave. So with this particular window, we wanted to use a silver rod for the, um, it's a ceiling mounted uh, treatment. So here the, the ceiling was red. We didn't want to use a, like the typical, like standard white track. We wanted something that was flat, um, mm -hmm. non-decorative, but still had a little bit of color. So we went with the silver and this was done, I want to say, six or seven years ago, don't quote me on it, but this particular rod at the time when they came out with the, the silver for the track did not have a butt master option. Ah, so, interesting. Uh, so sometimes what happens is with certain tracks and certain, um, certain lines of hardware, they don't have the option to have an overlap or a butt master. So we had to go with the overlap. That's why it's like this. Or else we would have in this situation, since it's a wall-to-wall -wall drape, we would have gone with a butt master option, but the rod was more important. Mm -hmm. So that's where you kind of have to be like. And was this Kirsch? Do you remember? Um, this was not Kirsch. This was, I want to say Menagerie, because this was before Kirsch had them. Menagerie was the only one who had them at the time. Interesting. I'm, I'm okay. trying to see. We've come a long way, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> so we were very surprised. Like at the time, there were only three colors available. There was the white, the black, and the silver. Mm -hmm. So we were very excited that we were able to get a silver rod that was on deck okay. that we could put to the ceiling. But we had to forego the. So it became the 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 decision became: Do we want the white rod that's really going to stick out on this burgundy ceiling, mm -hmm. but have our butt master? Or was it more important to have the silver rod and, you know, the couple of times that the drapes is closed that we have the overlap? See, yeah. these are the kinds of conversations in the rabbit holes that you have to get down into the nitty gritty, but you have to have the conversations before the drapes are made. Absolutely. And it's like, it's it's the thought that I have in my head all the time. There is never a perfect situation or so rarely there is a perfect situation or a perfect decision, but right. there's always an optimal decision where you have a set of um, criteria, set of circumstances, and you just have to make the best do, uh, the best balance of circumstances and criteria mm -hmm. and kind of mesh them together and see what, what, what works right. the best in your situation. 
All right, we're go going to um, give you one more technical aspect here. <laughs> <laughs> Again, if you're driving, drive carefully, do not stop, do not look at your phone. But I do encourage you to look at the slide again because this is a very educational slide. I believe it came directly from Kirsch.com. That's Kirsch. Mm -hmm. That's a Kirsch. Yep. Right. And so what it shows you, there are four lines there, and each line represents the uh, fullness percentage. So the first line is 60%, then 80%, 100%, and 120% fullness. Okay. And then the next column represents the distance between the carriers. And so really, so that's a snap tape. The snap tape is actually always the same. It's no, always it's, carrier, yeah. it's, it's, it's always the carriers, right, right. So it's it's how the carriers are positioned on that um, on that track and on that string and how far apart they are. So the further apart they are, think about if, if, if they're apart this way, then your wave is not very deep. It, it's just, it's a very shallow wave, which is what 60% is. And the closer they're positioned together, the, the, the deeper that wave becomes. So even if you can't see in the second column, if you can't see any of the numbers or the distances between the carriers, you can see how the picture just kind of goes from carriers up here to kind of like narrowing down mm -hmm. towards the bottom. So mm -hmm. I, I'm telling you the reason it does is because the higher the fullness, the smaller the distance between the carriers. And then the next wave shows you you what happens to the fabric and, and, and to the drape. And this is kind of like the top line view. So mm -hmm. if you looked at it from like the bird's eye from the top, you see that the 60% has a certain uh, um, density of the wave. And you see how if you go all the way down to 120%, that wave is a lot denser in it and a right. lot closer together. It's a lot fuller. Okay. And, and therefore the drape becomes a lot fuller, exactly. Now, when, when the drape is fuller, that means that more fabric was used so instead mm -hmm. of like 100 inches, maybe it was 120 or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't wanna get into math right now, but essentially it means that Before that math. wider, <laughs> A wider piece of goods was used to create that create that drape. If more fabric is used, the stack back is also thicker. Now, what's a stack back? A stack back is the amount of fabric that is on the side of the window when the drapery is completely open. And that's usually a question that every customer will ask because they don't want to cover their windows. <laughs> they, mm -hmm. they want to maximize their light source and you know, all that stuff. So you have to know when the draperies are open, what is that stack back? Now, another reason why is it important to know the stack back is because ultimately that will figure into your calculation of the rod. So mm -hmm. simple numbers, your window is 100 inches, your stack back is 20 inches, and you want to be completely off the window, then you take 20 inches of stack on this side, 20 inches of stack on the other side, you have your window of 100 inches, and boom, your rod is 140 mm -hmm. inches, essentially. So that's another reason why the stack back is so important. And then the last column is a stack back depth. And it's always the same because mm -hmm. the snaps are positioned at, at, at the same amount of distance and it's four and a half inches mm -hmm. between each other. Um, the, when, when, um, whether the drape is open or whether it's stacked, mm -hmm. it's always the same because the snaps actually don't change. The, the snaps don't change their position. So they're forward four and a half inches, back four and a half inches, forward four and a half inches, back four and a half inches. Why is it important? Well, that goes back to Kimberly's example from a few slides ago. If you were to have two layers of window treatments, okay, Let, let's say a sheer and an overdrape, you don't want them rubbing together. So you have to make sure to leave four and a half inches for the sheer and four and a half inches for the overdrape. And that's minimum. I mean, I would leave more. Yes. Or if there's only one layer, and let's say it's inside the pocket, or you need to know how much to move the, the, the sofa forward, or like you're creating the pocket up at the top. So there's multiple situations that can come up where you need to know what how much will the fabric go back by how much it'll go back and yeah. by how much it will go forward another reason you need to know that that, that this calculation of this number is for the bracket so and i've made that mistake you know you have four and a half inch uh, stack not, not a stack back but the yeah, stack back depth mm -hmm. and you get a bracket that's only three and a half inches well guess what happens the back a whole one inch of the drape keeps rubbing against the window and keeps and usually the frame comes up comes out another inch or so so that's, that becomes two inches of the rubbing <laughs> 
So not, not a good situation. Yes, yeah, so make sure that your brackets accommodate that stack back depth. So I know it's lots of information, a lot of technical information. I realize mm -hmm. that. Oh, this could be a whole big long class oh, yeah. and maybe you know you know there's an idea there's something that we should we should do at the very least i want you guys to know that these are beautiful draperies that yeah. have a very modern contemporary sleek understated look which is you know all the buzzwords for window treatments mm -hmm. nowadays and uh, and that they're possible and really as a designer that's all you need to know it's possible <laughs> and it's possible to do it and then leave it to your window treatment specialist and your knowledgeable work from partner to uh, walk you through all this detail and work yeah. through all this detail on the fabrication side yeah as designers and clients you don't we don't expect you to know all these nudgy little details that's why you call places like window works and Vitalia Inc. So because we we've been there, we've made the mistakes. We've we've done the whole not enough space for the pocket, overlap, this rod only comes in an overlap and not a butt master and yada yada. So it is a lot of technical, but these are things that just to kind of put it in your brain so that when you are dealing with window treatments and it comes up, you're like, oh yeah, I know what that means. Exactly. That's exactly it. You don't That's you, you, you may not be the one driving the question, mm -hmm. but once the question is posed to you by the window you treatment, know. you're going to be like, what? Huh? <laughs> What's a stack back depth? Yeah. What's exactly. the fullness? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All righty, everyone. Well, that is today's episode. We really hope you um, enjoyed it uh, and you got to some good information, a couple of little nuggets that you can take uh, with you on your next window treatment project. Um, for us here at Window Works, we have a free goodie on our website. We have a ebook that Luann wrote a couple of years ago, Architectural Digest Isn't Coming, 10 Things You Need to Know About Custom Window Treatment. So if you're new to the window treatment game, head on over to our website and download that ebook because it kind of gives you window treatment 101. <laughs> and um, on the part of Vitalia Inc., we also have a, uh, a free goodie for you. Mm -hmm. It's called 37 and a half window treatment ideas for you to use immediately. Swipe, steal and make your own on your next design project. And essentially it's a free, instantly downloadable lookbook of a whole bunch of uh, window treatment projects that we created mm -hmm. here in um, at Vitalia Inc. Curated by yours truly. I, I point out the various things that you should pay attention to and what has and has not worked for us. So it, it's, it becomes your portfolio in the way. It mm -hmm. becomes your way of showing your customers the various ideas of of what to do in 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 their homes if you're stuck on the project and you're like i wonder what i should do here you can look through this lookbook to come up with some inspiration or or grab an idea exactly like it is and completely steal and make it your own i am i'm all for it i give you complete authority to do that or just use it to inspire you to create something new so that's available at vitaliainc.com so make sure to download yours okay and in about two weeks or so, we have Luann Nigara Live out there. Who has signed up to be part of Luann Nigara Live? Yes. Yep, I'm going. I'm going. It is going to be jam-packed with a lot of great uh, panelists and speakers, and you do not want to miss it. So you definitely want to make sure that you sign up. Tickets are still available. So if you want to get any more information, um, be sure you're following this lady on Instagram because she's doing a lot of uh, live videos and things like that, explaining what's happening. Um, and if, if you miss the videos, uh, head on over to her website, luannigara.com, and you can find out all the information on Luann Live. And of course, this is going to be a virtual event since mm -hmm. none of us are traveling everywhere. But I want to make it extremely clear that it's not going to be your any other Zoom type of no. event, any other run of the mill video type no. of conference where you are sitting and just like bored out of your skull, no. <laughs> like my son says. <laughs> so Luann is actually getting a professional TV video crew. Production crew, yep. Production crew to create this whole environment of where she is leading the panelists and she's leading the discussion
questions and she's leading all of you guys who are watching her on their screens but are fully vested and fully present and fully immersed in the experience that she is creating and so with for kim and i having you know just a little bit maybe more of the behind the scenes knowledge of how it's all going to go down and, and what's going gina's like i'm signed up <laughs> um, we know that it i mean it's like a virtual event of the century and i cannot understate it enough no you'll be what you'll be is creating is like nothing you've ever seen before right and it will rival any other live in-person event yes so we hope to see you there <laughs> and if you have a ripple full project that you need help with um, and you don't want to worry about all those details, stack back 80%, butt master overlap, whatever. Um, please be sure if you're in the New Jersey or New York area to give us a call. I would be happy to help you on that project or any window treatment or awning project that you may have. We are a full service team here. We have the interior side of our business, the awning side of our business, and we also are staffed with our very own installers. Um, Bill is who primarily does all of my installs, and he's been doing this 35 years so he's seen every type of ripple folds and window treatment installation you could have possibly imagine <laughs> i can't even <laughs> 35 no. years if he and doesn't have an answer to it i'm like oh okay <laughs> And the same goes for us as well here at Vitalia Inc. However, we are in the Philadelphia area. So if you're an interior designer in the Philadelphia area looking for that support on your window treatment projects, Ripple Fold or otherwise, we are your one-stop shop, your go-to resource. We're a comprehensive window treatment company that takes care of your installation, fabrication, measurement, project management, and everything in between so that um, you feel supported, you feel taken care of and we always have your back as it comes to window treatment so if you have a project and would like us to be involved so that you can have that vip vitalia ink treatment mm -hmm. just give us a call i'm on instagram there's my email my phone number we would love to help you out all righty everyone well that is today's episode we hope you enjoyed um our little mini tutorial on ripple full drapes uh we look forward to seeing you next friday because if it's Friday, it's, it's Window w Treatment Live. <laughs> WCF Live, everyone. That's Have right. We'll see you every Friday right here on Instagram and Facebook, 12 noon. See you then. Bye. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend, everyone.